got money in it? No. All right. Yeah. That was like obviously heartbreaking. Now you went. Tell me, you went, you went six at that time. Yeah, I was a kid. Damn. I was, I was no. I when he passed away when I was seven, I think. Wow. So I was in grade one. Okay. At school, but um, I was already a fan of the music from six. Mm -hmm. I started writing music mm -hmm. from six. All right. So you remember back in the days they used to drop singles. Right, right, right. Which had Long acapella, yeah, instrumental, uh -huh. whatever. Blah, blah, blah. So that's how I learned mm -hmm. how to. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. then because. Obviously, the rapping style was just so like B.I.G. Mm -hmm. rap, 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 rap. Yeah. Sometimes I couldn't catch all the lyrics mm -hmm. that I, you know, what, I make up my own stuff. And then mm -hmm. I was like, no, what, actually, let me make up my own mm -hmm. whole entire thing. And then that's what I used to do, like for myself. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what it was. Like I didn't know that like, I was songwriting. Or okay, whatever. it was just like you know something I. You're putting things together. But well, did you think it was more like uh, a poetry? A poetry thing. you were doing? No, it wasn't. It wasn't poetry. Okay, it was a cultural thing. Mm -hmm. um, like Michael Jackson, mm -hmm. keep on with the first mm -hmm. stop. Mm -hmm. Don't stop till you get enough. Mm -hmm. And then, like in in Soweto, mm -hmm. the kids would say, "Keep on, got it, but tato, nice time in Fedile." So they changed the lyrics right, already. Right, right, so right. like that was already a thing. Okay, all right. You know, growing up like, right, as right, kids, right, right, like right. that was already a thing. So okay. it was just a progression of that, and okay. then only uh, after because uh, I was taking the instrumentals. Uh -huh. Right, trying to figure out what is these lyrics. Okay, some words you cannot hear because the American accent and everything else is a little mm. bit too distant. And then you make up your own things mm -hmm. when you put the instrumental and you just play the instrumental and you sing your own things. Mm -hmm. And um, my mother had a Technics mm -hmm. um, hi fi. Okay. okay. So obviously we would dub, record, mm -hmm. and then you could connect the headphone and okay. in the headphone jack. And mm -hmm. then you could use the headphone jack to actually, well, the headphone mm -hmm. earpiece mm -hmm. to actually speak into yeah, my yeah, and record. Yeah, record. We have ours with Marans. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. yeah. Marans, those are the ones. The those ones. are the ones. Take yeah. makes and Marans. Yes. Yes. No, 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 no. <laughs> they, they were the Marans, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh -huh. And then there were the techniques, which were, I think, slightly cheaper, but mm -hmm. you know, they had a better advertising campaign, and mm -hmm. it's like, oh, mm -hmm. this is the whole. And they had a, 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 a greater variety of products. Yes. So, like, my family bought into the whole entire techniques thing. You okay. know what I mean? Marans were like when we used to visit, like, um, Jewish families mm. um, that my parents or that my mom used to work for, whatever they would had those. Okay. You know, those when that's when I saw those and with the gigantic speakers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, mm -hmm. power amp yeah, and everything. You know I mean? The Technics yeah. had a speaker like yeah, mm -hmm. this big. You know? uh -huh. But the Marans was like you know as tall as me at uh -huh. that at that age. Uh -huh. So that was basically the music journey. Mm -hmm. So more money, more problems, mm -hmm. just like crystallized because that's when. Diddy did that whole in tra transition into making music himself, mm -hmm. you know, a lot more. And basically started showing, okay, this is the label. Mm -hmm. And he had all his artists that he was also mm -hmm. co-signing, doing collaborations with him. Mm -hmm. This is how we set up a movement. This is Bad Boy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I was in Bad Boy team. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I was making my own Bad Boy. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, we used to play soccer and have our own soccer teams. I'd be right. Barcelona, you'd be Real Madrid, now right. I'd be bad boy, uh -huh. you know what I mean? And have my artists <laughs> as kids, like, you know, just playing it around. I'm, I'm puffy. Yeah. I would always be puffy. Those guys influence a lot. They influence and inspired us a lot, of, a lot more than we actually give them credit for. Give them credit for, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they probably don't even know the story. They influenced us because they were black. Yes. And they were doing things we'd never seen black people do. Yes, yes. You know? So, so just, just give a year. What year would we say that? This way? is like this is between from I was bitten by the bug in '96 when I fell in love with the music when okay. I got okay. my first music collection. Mm -hmm. My mother bought me Notorious B.I.G. Mm -hmm. and then by the time 1998, mm -hmm. I was certain that this is okay. the path that I'm going on. Okay. okay. And then in 1999, mm -hmm. um, I got to be part of an interview for Sunday World. It mm -hmm. was the second edition of the Sunday World and they were interviewing mm -hmm. um, um, gifted children, black mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. And they interviewed myself and another child from Morris Isaacson mm -hmm. um, High School in Soweto or secondary. And then um, basically he just spoke about whatever he spoke about. Mm -hmm. And all I could speak about is how I'm going to be the next Puff Daddy. Because mm -hmm. that's that's what it was. You know, mm -hmm. he's, he waxes lyrical about all uh, um, international stars like Puff Daddy and Leonardo DiCaprio because mm -hmm. Leonardo DiCaprio was obviously 98 mm -hmm. it was just after Titanic so that's your favorite actor right right, right, uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean there's no other uh -huh. uh, after Titanic right uh -huh. um Jack you know Ni 96 96 Ni 98 yeah if you're just joining us 
We're sitting on the green chair yeah. with Nota, the authority. Thank you. Welcome to another episode of uh, Mosiac, piece you. number 31 or 32. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for inviting me. You're very me. welcome. We're actually going back to f discover what makes Nota the authority. Uh. Yeah. And so we just joined in when we were speaking about where the music book hit, where that, you actually that said it. that. How, what was it that sparked the professionalism of it? To, 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 to make it economical. So, so, so that's that, it, yeah. yeah, so that's what you saw. That's what, what I saw, That's yeah. what you saw with Bad Boy. Like, there's economics to this yeah, thing, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was shiny suits. Yeah. Like, everything. And yeah. plus, I mean, it's not like I grew up in the township. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up, you know, near Santon. Santon City was where I'd go to. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, um, even when I grew older, um, you know, um, back in the days, uh, so parents, like, close your ears right now. But um, at the Sentence Sun, mm -hmm. they used to allow us to drink as okay. like teenagers. All right. Okay. So obviously you'd walk through the Diamond Walk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So like uh -huh. uh, with the whole entire squad, mm -hmm. we'd get to one of our boys who was a little bit looking older with a beard mm -hmm. and then he'd sit at the table at the mm -hmm. restaurant, mm -hmm. he'd go to the bar, order mm -hmm. drinks, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? we just chill. Mm -hmm. And so that was the culture. So. Even then, I, I wasn't far from what I was seeing on the screens. Right, right. You know, okay. It became reality very soon. Mm -hmm. But then if you're walking around and you're like, oh, damn, these things that these people are wearing, this is how much it actually costs. This mm -hmm. is, wow, okay, cool. Which means mm -hmm. these guys are making money, right, right. you know, with this music thing. So mm -hmm. it developed from there. Mm -hmm. And by the time I was a teenager, then I already knew that I had, like, songwriting skill, rap skill, mm -hmm. um, no singing. What was the first, the first rant you made? What was it? The first rant. Yeah, the first like the first check that I made. Yeah. From like a beat that I sold. I okay. Got, I, I got six hundred bucks from Sugar Smacks, and okay. he, he refused to pay me for such a long time. And then I called him one time. I was like, "Listen, I'm actually hosting an event, mm -hmm. and I'm short of money, mm -hmm. and you owe me money for your beat. Mm -hmm. Your song is playing on radio. Please, can you bring me the money?" Mm -hmm. And he gave it gave it to me on the day of the event, mm -hmm. and I, I think I needed to pay off the balance of flyer printing, which cost me like 3,000 rands mm -hmm. at that point in time. So he gave me my 600, and that was the first um, check that I got for actual composition. For making, that yeah, I made, com yeah. Um, for an actual composition that I made. That's mm -hmm. the first rand that Sugar I got. Smack. Yeah, okay. from Sugar Smacks. And okay. then um, from there, that was, when was this? 2006, 2007? Mm -hmm. That was 2006, seven. Mm -hmm. And the song ended up on Ventilation uh, Volume 2 as a bonus track, Sugar, mm -hmm. Sugar, Sugar, Ella. It was okay. Sugar Smacks' first ever solo single. Okay. And that's what introduced me to like Bada Bing Entertainment and mm -hmm. everything else. So mm -hmm. like when I got in there, it's not like I was making money, mm -hmm. but um, I was learning and they had access to the entire industry. So mm -hmm. yeah, at that time, I think if even Younger Chief was there, right? I found him there. Yeah, he was there. Everybody yeah. was there. Slicker, Slicker there. was there. Yeah. Everyone, everyone was yeah. there. So that was, but they, that was they, they, but at that time they were, they were coining it. Well, they were trying to. Yeah. They but, were trying to. But yeah, they, yeah. They, they have, From they a hip-hop Yeah, they have found other income screams. Yeah, that's true. And that's what, and that's what, that's what, that's what was, 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 was um, smart about um, mm. Slicker and that mm. whole ventilation mm. thing. They found other income screams yeah. there, rather than just beat making, yeah. live performance, yeah. and so on, you know? Exactly. So even like when it comes mm. from a live performance perspective, mm. I mean, once... Um, I turned 16, we realized that there was a market for kids my mm -hmm. age mm -hmm. who wanted hip hop events mm -hmm. and there were no hip hop events, like mm -hmm. house was dominating everything, like mm -hmm. every lineup was house. So we started our own parties and we'd go to them mm -hmm. and we'd pack out clubs. First like a couple hundred kids, then thousands mm -hmm. of kids. Mm -hmm. And that's like, I mean, I went from, even I told you, I was like, so first check, I got that 600 rand. Mm -hmm. But immediately after that 600 rand, mm -hmm. you know, that next night when I was counting the cash from the gig that we did, mm -hmm. I was like, what the hell is 600 rand? Why would I be making beats? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We just made 187,000 rand. Mm -hmm. We had 1,000 rands stacks mm -hmm. on the carpet, probably about this big, like mm -hmm. this. And then we stacked them. 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, um, mm -hmm. making serious money. Like when I was 18, um, I remember like the last big successful gig that I did mm -hmm. with some of my partners. I think I got like 
87,000, mm. 40 of which was mine. Mm-hmm. And I posed on my, my Facebook at the time mm-hmm. with like a stack of my 40,000 like uh-huh. on my neck, you know. Uh-huh. This is when, 2008. And then I did a, a, an Akon concert of the party, mm-hmm. but I had to rebrand it and change it at the last minute because at first we had partnered with Convict Music to get the rights to host the event, but mm. then obviously, it, I don't know what happened, but either way, Tibo Touch decided to take it somewhere else and, mm-hmm. you know, uh, there was nothing we could do to fight it. And um, even though um, we didn't have like the official name, the proximity, mm-hmm. our location, meant that we made money mm-hmm. and you know a lot of guys came through there so Elias and his team trusted that we could pull mm-hmm. off something and we pulled off something really good I mean mm-hmm. Budweiser was still being introduced into South Africa mm-hmm. uh, this was before AB had bought SAB yeah. Yeah, so it, it was being distributed by Halewood I think 2008 2009 is when they were actually yes. and then 2010 yeah. is when they they came yes. they came so, in big time yeah so Budweiser was like one of the famous beer brands that we'd seen in mm. all American movies mm-hmm. so we branded the whole entire thing with Budweiser Budweiser mm-hmm. all over mm-hmm. inside LES fresh to death mm-hmm. you know it was like a trip to America <laughs> you know <laughs> inside the club you know and um, mm. you know uh, that's some good, interesting memories and stories, yeah. too. So, I mean, like, apart from that, um, uh, uh, sorry, that was just my my lawyer calling me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, like, I just need to tell her that, uh, Sanela, I'm in an interview, I'll call you back. Sorry about that. So, um, I mean, from just doing that event alone, mm-hmm. um, I then realized that, okay, fine, I've got the eventing thing done. Right, I've always had the music thing mm-hmm. in my back pocket and everything else, but like the beat making thing is not gonna make me money, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I need to have like a record company or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought to myself, oh, maybe I could, you know, um, do the music myself, start mm-hmm. recording my own music. So I recorded music, recorded an entire album mm-hmm. um, before I finished my trick mm-hmm. and just left it in my house and mm-hmm. never released it, never touched it. You know, I still have it. You know, it was called the demo of note. Okay. Yeah. So it it was supposed to lead to an album called the album of note. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, uh, I guess after that whole entire stint with the LES, mm-hmm. you know, I realized okay, fine, I this is not gonna take us anywhere further than the northern suburbs of Joburg. Right. And the people who are at a mass market from mm-hmm. a hip-hop perspective, mm-hmm. or squatter camp still. Right, right. So that's when I said, no ways, I need to go and internet, better being whatever they need me to do, if it's clean floors or whatever, I'll do it for free, mm-hmm. you know? And they said, do it for Nando's lunch. And mm-hmm. I said, no, cool. And I thought, okay, what is the gap here? What are they missing? Mm-hmm. And I thought, ha, huh, social media. Mm-hmm. We were already marketing our parties on social media. They mm-hmm. hadn't had a figure of how social media was working mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. intimately. And, yeah, and it was Facebook, Facebook. Yeah, uh, I already had 5,000 friends already uh, at that, yeah. at that, but by that point in time, you know what I mean? Okay. And so Facebook, um, there was MySpace prior to Facebook as well. And then there was um, yeah. B- BBM yeah. messaging groups. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All, all those things. Spamming so people. All, all those things. You know, <laughs> we really like, mm-hmm. we really were like in it onto mm-hmm. the social media. I mean, um, they already had Yanga, who was their website administrator for ventilation.co.za. Mm-hmm. I thought that, you know, we could add more value to the website by having social media things. Mm-hmm. And also we could add more value to the individual artist brands mm-hmm. by ensuring that someone mm-hmm. is there to create content mm-hmm. for their social media pages. So whether it be Squatter Camp, whether it be Sugar Smacks, whether it be Slicker, whether it be Questa, mm-hmm. you know, we'd be creating content for them, you mm-hmm. know, or Tito Minato. You know, we'd mm-hmm. be creating content for them. Or Bonang, actually. Mm-hmm. Bonang. Bonang, okay. mm, Yeah. So, you know, imagine, um, fresh out of high school, getting to work with Slicker, Sugar, Smacks, Bonang. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, um, learning the industry, going to all the mm-hmm. top events and mm-hmm. being VIP and having all access. You know, I've never known what it's like to not have all access as an adult. Mm-hmm. Um, so even like today, like the, these days, sometimes I go to concerts and I go into the crowd because like, uh, like you know, uh, I never actually had the. Now, <laughs> so it's a different feeling. So I never actually. So, now, so, so it's a different ever, feeling, right? I never ever got. Uh-huh. I never ever got to be in the crowd except for when Jay Z or Kanye were performing. Uh huh. You know what I mean? Okay. Like to be at a local event, local festival, and I'm not involved in some way. Yeah, no, I'd backstage never had that. or something. Yeah. Yeah. So ninety six, ninety eight. 
um, beat maker to writer. Beat maker. I started beat to making beats in 2004. Events promotion to not working with Bella. So is th is this the reason why we must call you the authority? Well, not really. Okay, what's the reason we must call you the well, authority? Well, I mean, look, I, so my musical journey, so from the mm. first musical production side of things, I mean, mm. like, it's a 25-year musical journey mm. in terms of me falling in love with hip-hop music. Mm -hmm. um, 17 years of me being involved in making of the music. Mm -hmm. And um, other than that, I mean, the, the whole entire authority thing, I was like, you know, no one is, leadership is about someone taking responsibility, mm -hmm. you know, you, um, the, 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 um, your mother is, your, is a leader to you mm -hmm. because she takes responsibility. She can't abandon that responsibility, but right, she right. takes it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's how she leads her family. So I thought, you know, this hip hop community that have contributed so much to, right, I wanted to grow, flourish, mm -hmm. and be able to contribute to the well being mm -hmm. of other people's lives other mm -hmm. than myself. Mm -hmm. You know, it's done so much from me, for me. You know what I mean? I'm a three time dropout, but. You know, um, even though there's chartered accountants and everything I, uh, that I went to school with and everything else, their careers didn't materialize mm -hmm. into a point where I could be sitting down at 31 years old and say, listen, I'm taking a break from work. I don't know when I will work again. Mm -hmm. um, but for now, I'm just retiring mm -hmm. uh, to work on other things like passion mm -hmm. projects, like start from scratch again, mm -hmm. be an amateur at things again. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they okay. don't have that freedom. Okay. They're in the rat race the entire way up until you're like 45, 50. 50 that's where yeah, you, 60 your investment yeah. starts, starts maturing. To, yeah. And then now you can have options and stuff like that. I was like, well, no But at that time, it's too late, right? But tell me, um, back to back to the mm. authority. Mm. It sounds like you said it's leadership and responsibility. Yeah, but some it. people would just say you're actually just calling out people. You're just yeah. calling out people. What, 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 what is it that you, you want to lead? So, I mean, calling out or, hip, or is it hip-hop? It's dissing. You, I'm dissing everything that's no, whack. You, yeah, but that's... That's it. But That's hip-hop. But that's, that's not... That's not that's always you, just made, you, just, you, just, you just compared it to, to, to your mother being responsible for you. She doesn't only just call, call you out. She no, calls you out that's true. and then tells you where the positive things, but where I, the way to go. I, I, You're not, and are you I doing do that? that? I've, I've done that so okay. much. I've, right. done that so, I've given people the codes, mm -hmm. everything, how I did it, uh -huh. you know who I spoke to, mm -hmm. you know, who gave me the deal, the mm -hmm. exact amount of the deal, mm -hmm. how much were the percentages, okay. what are the splits, what's fair, mm -hmm. you know, all the things that people would necessarily call codes. Right. I gave up for free. Okay. So the people that are threatened are people who have a mic mm -hmm. but are misusing it. Okay. And I now have a mic. Mm -hmm. I take on the mic and the leadership and I use it the way I do it mm -hmm. and I get much more of a positive response mm -hmm. for what I'm doing on the mic because it's actually got substance. Mm -hmm. And those who are misusing their mics mm -hmm. feel inferior and jealous. And also at the same time, I'm calling out all the guys who are misusing their mics, mm. you know, because this microphone is a powerful tool. Yeah. And um, it, but, also, it also has a powerful black consciousness mm -hmm. movement meaning because mm -hmm. there's a certain thing about the way in which hip hop artists or what, they call it choking the mic. Right. Why do you guys choke the mic? It's because we got our fists up. Right. You know what I mean? And we know that's a Black Panther symbol. Right. right. So this mic is a black consciousness tool. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. If you're saying anything other than black consciousness through mm -hmm. this mic, you're mm -hmm. misleading your people. Okay. That is it. Anything that's other than black consciousness. If you're out there telling, talking, selling American imperialism, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So you're speaking specifically to, to hip hop. That's it. Okay. All right. You know what I mean? All yes, right. there's other cultural things that right. I call out. You know what I mean? Right. Like rape culture within the industry because mm -hmm. like there's women that mm -hmm. are in this industry. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm married to someone who's in the industry mm -hmm. as well. And although she might not be a victim of mm -hmm. some of the abuses, mm -hmm. you know, it's rampant. Right. And okay. I need to use some of my male privilege in a way mm -hmm. to sanitize the space okay. in a way that I feel like, you know, okay. so that my wife is safer. Okay. Right. So that mm -hmm. other people's wives are safer. Other right, people's right. daughters are mm -hmm. safer. You know, women are safer. Mm -hmm. And that's also a stance I took, like mm -hmm. at the beginning of this year, on the 16th of January, I was like, mm -hmm. you know what? This year is going to be a reckoning. Mm -hmm. And if anyone I see, like after the whole Greg Maloka thing mm -hmm. from Kai FM, I said, anyone who's in that circle, mm -hmm. any offense you make, trust mm -hmm. me, if you're taking pictures with them, associating with them, I'm coming for you. It was a warning uh -huh. and it was a promise. 
there was a party where they were like there was fresh there there mm. was euphonic there mm. there was a whole lot of house shimza was there mbalula was there mm. and i said everyone who's in this pictures if there's anything mm. about you that's either rapey or mm -hmm. anything about abusing women or anything like that I am gunning for you personally, mm -hmm. not from an anonymous account. Right. Because you guys always accuse people, oh, and these guys are anonymous. That are, no, it's me. You know who I am. You know where I am. You know you can call me. Mm. That's it. But are you achieving anything with I've this thing? I've achieved so much. Okay. So much. Well, beyond just I've likes so and, much. and, like, and look followers, at, look right? At, look, at, look, at the, look at a guy like Black Coffee who okay. could use his celebrity to basically sanitize his brand. Right. I basically took so many shots at him mm -hmm. that anybody could see that this guy is human as well. Mm -hmm. Just like all of us, we're fallible. Okay. Right? I did that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he sent cops to come and assault me or whatever, but he didn't know that it's fine. I can also get myself out of jail in a couple of hours or whatever. You mm -hmm. can pay cops, I can pay them even more. Okay. You know what I mean? We can have okay. an exchange on how much we pay cops to rough each other up <laughs> until one of us dies. <laughs> all right. Or you can realize well, that... Well, we don't, we don't want that. We, you know, yeah, I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that, we, that's the game he was playing. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. So I was like, I, I don't stoop to that level. Okay. But I know what you're doing. I know that level. But I'm mm. going to disempower you. Okay. I'm going to use this whole entire incident and splatter it on each and every single Daily Sun page and every okay. single filling station in South Africa. Uh -huh. Your face is going to be there next okay. to mine saying that you paid off cops okay. to come and rough me up. Uh -huh. And that you're that, that that affects your brand. Mm. In the perception of people outside of the internet media. Let's mm. talk about the Daily Sun um, mm. um, circulation. Mm -hmm. that's, sort of the, that's the type of person you are. Mm. So now when... There's abuse claims against you. There's also the video of you slapping Tiamo. Mm. That's something that now I'm bringing mm. back to the fore. Mm. You know what I mean? There's also just like your abuse of women in general, like mm. being a philanderer, mm -hmm. having children outside of um, mm. your relationship, for me is abuse. Well, I never, are, are, you, are, you, are you just being the, the judge, jury and the judge here? Um, I'm taking the leadership. Leadership? Leadership where? Like as in, By example. Yeah, yeah. but... What makes it? What, who 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 confirms that the way the, that you feel the is the right way? No, that's leadership. You okay. take responsibility. You, you don't just, wait for anyone to you appoint just, you. You take it. You take it. Okay. I took it. All right. Is that right? like a, a dictator? It's not kind because of, at the end of the day, you make yourself a target. Mm -hmm. I'm the one who gets shackled up and you know attacked. And, okay. You know what I mean? Has the okay, character rubble, rubble assassinated? Rouser. You know what I mean? Like you uh -huh. know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. There's risk to it. Right. And I say, okay, I accept the risk. Okay. It's not like there's no consequences mm -hmm. for my actions. Yeah, there's consequences. Yeah. There's consequences. You made, the, you made the choice. I made the choice. I right. decided what I'm going to lose uh -huh. because I thought that what I'm going to gain is worth more. Okay. Okay. Huh. So when you speak about being the authority, it's, it's, it's just mm. hopefully you feel like you're leading people in the right direction. Yeah. Calling them out, also giving some solutions. Mm hmm um, opening doors for people mm -hmm. um, and just giving up the game mm -hmm. so that people are not in the dark. Democratizing the knowledge. Okay. It's like blockchain, decentralization. Yeah. Uh huh. That's it. Okay. Because I feel like we could all have like the best studio and pick the top 10 best producers mm -hmm. in the country, mm -hmm. or we could democratize the knowledge and have 50 million kids mm -hmm. producing mm -hmm. music and then the cream rises to the top and mm -hmm. you pick from that. Mm. I know. I know that the barrier of entry for producing music is getting lower and lower. Yeah. But I mean, but then you end up having too much access. Sometimes spoils the cake. You know. Well, I don't think so because you know what happens. Because the untalented people would want to do that. No, that's fine. And they will leave other things that maybe they're really talented at. To come mm -hmm. and do this because it's easy no, access I see to that. that. Yeah. I see that. But that is not created by the democratization of the knowledge. Mm -hmm. Because if it was democratized, mm -hmm. the talent would always shine because mm -hmm. people can hear the talent. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So what you have is that now you've got like a mafia operation where we decide who becomes famous. So mm -hmm. we can say, hey, you're a TV presenter. You've got four million subs, um, mm -hmm. uh, followers mm -hmm. on your thing. Mm -hmm. Let's turn you into a rapper. And then you get a boy D. Right. Uh, you know what I mean? Or you let's model you, then you get a skanda queen or no, no muzi. Okay. You know what I mean? That's when you get that. But mm. when you democratize it, mm. now a D koala can put her music out on the mm. internet and then all of a sudden she can rise to the top. Mm -hmm. and but I still, I mean, like, mm -hmm. 
idols and the voices. They're doing that, aren't they? No, they're Democratizing. Not. No, they're well, not. Well, idols are just, it's a TV show. Once yeah. the season is over, people are waiting to see the next contest. Uh, of what, they don't care about what no, wins. No, I'm saying that the, the process is democratizing because they're saying we're going to do audition in everywhere. No. Every hood, every city, and we're going to take line of queue of people and you're going to let them perform no, to give them opportunity to shine. Because you're, you're putting them into the idol system. Yeah. The internet. But before they get they, to the idol system, they... They, they they get a chance to, to, to shine in audition. Yes, that's you yeah. have to come into audition yes. and now we have to judge you. Right. Forget a golden ticket. Okay. Take your music, make it, put it on SoundCloud, put it on YouTube, put it yeah. on whatever. Yeah. There's no judges there. It's uh -huh. just direct to consumer. Well, the, the, the consumers are, are the it's judges. It's direct to consumer. Yeah. You know, they're the consumers. Mm -hmm. They're not judging it. They're consuming it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. yes, you can you can say that there's Plattoria, there's a level of yeah. judgment mm -hmm. in terms of choosing what you consume, mm -hmm. but either way, you're not consuming to judge it. You're not a critic. Mm -hmm. You're consuming to enjoy it, mm -hmm. and you'll consume whatever you enjoy. Whatever you enjoy more, you'll consume more of. And at the end of the day, people's tastes are people's tastes. Mm -hmm. Let the people decide. You know, they decide with their money. Mm -hmm. They decide with their time. They decide with their eyeballs. Mm -hmm. Whether it's uh, what they like is what they see. You know what I mean? And um, so, if you had your way. You open the floodgate, everybody puts music out. Look, let me tell you why I say we need to democratize the system. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are not as developed as the mm -hmm. Western world. Mm -hmm. The Western world, it's basically a cartel mm -hmm. of three labels. Right. Warner, Sony, Universal. Mm -hmm. African continent has got a billion people. Mm -hmm. If we allow those people with the capital dominance to actually come into our markets and own mm. the mm. majority of the market share, we'll never have independent ownership of our own mm -hmm. cultural heritage. Mm -hmm. Now, how comfortable do you feel knowing that Vincente Bellor, mm -hmm. who owns Vivendi, mm -hmm. who owns most of Universal, who mm -hmm. controls Universal, mm -hmm. owns such important black history and black art mm -hmm. like Kanye West's masters? Mm -hmm. Imagine that mm -hmm. a European mm -hmm. owns the most prized position mm -hmm. created by a black artist. Mm -hmm. When are we ever going to get the opportunity to actually own what it is that we bring to the world? And what we bring to the world mm -hmm. as Africans is culture. Right. We've cultured the world. Mm -hmm. But if we cannot monetize our culture, mm -hmm. then... But it has, to go, it has to go into a machinery. No, to, no, no, to really no. monetize it to the full extent, no? No, 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 no. To monetize it within their system. Right, yes. Yes, within their system. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is build up mm -hmm. value mm -hmm. so that we can create our own systems mm -hmm. to monetize our culture and mm -hmm. then they can buy it from us at the premium. Okay. That's what we need to actually do. Okay. We need to do a job to say, we're not countering the labels or the majors or anything else. We're mm -hmm. not countering them. Mm -hmm. We're just saying, at we're diversifying the options mm -hmm. and we don't want Africa to be dominated by three major record companies mm -hmm. that come from elsewhere. One mm -hmm. comes from Japan, the other one Warner comes from the United States, the mm -hmm. other one below France, mm -hmm. yeah. Universal. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's now um, um, listed in mm -hmm. Amsterdam. Right, right. You know, now that the companies are public, yes, it's fine. Let's get some more black ownership. Mm -hmm. But think about it. All of that music, right? Mm -hmm. All of that music that Universal has, all of that music that Warner has, all of that music that um, Sony has. If you look at all the artists that contributed to the mm -hmm. entire catalog, mm -hmm. right? Which artist's music is more valuable? The white artist mm -hmm. or the black artist? Mm. Well, you're, you're gonna have to find me some numbers because I, 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 mean, I, I, I don't think it's all black music. I don't it's think it's majority I mean, like, black music. I mean, is there a white Michael Jackson? Um, in this current? No. Just in ever. Case, ever. Isn't no, there, there is no. Elvis? Beatles? No, he, they, they, not Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They're not Michael Jackson. Um, Queen? They're Ma not Michael Jackson. Bon Jovi? No? They're not Michael Jackson. Okay. They're not Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They haven't created the culture. Mm -hmm. Even that, that's rock and roll. That's Little Richie. Mm -hmm. A black artist. Yes, a yeah. black artist sound. Yes. That was taken by yeah. white people who could sell it to their own people. Right. Because of their privilege. It's right. just like hip hop. Mm -hmm. As soon as Eminem came, white kids could now, you know, mm -hmm. buy music that was done by a white rapper. Mm -hmm. And that's why oh, he was they the best selling they rapper. Felt, they yeah, they felt they felt freer to do that, especially to the parents. The parents, it became 
allowed. Okay. But the, but the white kids were listening to it underground. Everything that's underground is actually what they, the kids are listening to. They were listening to it underground. I was never allowed to listen to yeah. explicit content, uh -huh. but like, that's what I had. I never, yeah. never tell my parents that it's explicit content. And I never mm. listened to my mm. VIG albums with my parents in the house and everything else. I turned mm. that on when during the week when you're on holidays and stuff mm. like that. Mm. You know, So anything that's allowed by the parents, the kids mm. don't want anyway. Mm. Mm. So Eminem didn't, it, it wasn't really about allowing it. Mm. It was... From the parents' perspective. Yeah, no, but even so, it okay. wasn't about allowing it. What Eminem benefited from was the fact that now he could normalize, mm -hmm. right, this rap culture mm -hmm. as some form of art and expression other than the exploitation of black pain, mm -hmm. which white people in America were buying into because it's exotic, mm -hmm. you know. But at the end of the day, African Americans are only 13% of that population. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So obviously Eminem is going to be the best selling rapper. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean it's, at that it's, time. it's 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 but now that it's no, it's brains, no longer it's no now, brain, yeah. yeah, but now that it's no longer about, you know, your color and everything else, mm -hmm. you know, hip hop has grown beyond that because mm -hmm. I think Eminem got hip hop to a certain mm -hmm. it, it broke a certain levy. Right, right, right. And once he'd broken that levy, mm -hmm. now everything was normalized. Now the next artist that he released, fifty cent sells ten million mm -hmm. albums on his debut mm -hmm. worldwide. You know, mm -hmm. it goes diamond globally. Mm -hmm. And now the levy has been broken. Now mm -hmm. the sales records mm -hmm. are being broken, you know, mm -hmm. um, by every single artist. But again, it was about the glorification of black pain and selling black pain. Mm -hmm. But who is doing the selling of the black pain? Mm -hmm. And who is making the most money out of the selling oh, of the black yes, pain? Yes, 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 Jimmy yes. Iovine. Right. He's able to get himself into a position mm -hmm. where he can negotiate with Steve Jobs mm -hmm. and help him set up Apple mm -hmm. and then help him um, set up um, mm -hmm. iTunes mm -hmm. and then help him and then set himself up Beats Audio mm -hmm. and whatever mm -hmm. and then sell that to mm -hmm. Apple for billions of dollars, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so being was, backed by the corporation, mm -hmm. which is obviously the uh, Interscope, Geffen, Universal, mm -hmm. Okay, what's the practical learning here? The practical learning is that... That somebody now watching this right now... Needs to get... Yes, what's the practical the learning? The practical with, learning with, is with, that black-owned mm -hmm. black music mm -hmm. is critical okay. if we're going to mm -hmm. culture mm -hmm. the world mm -hmm. and profit from it mm -hmm. and benefit from it mm -hmm. as Africans. Okay. But the machineries, the, the, the aggregators, are still white-owned. Why aren't we setting up our own aggregate? Mm. Black owned, mm -hmm. black music. Mm -hmm. If we're if the music is black, mm -hmm. the ownership needs to also be the same. Well, the ownership of the value chains had no, to be all black, or just the ownership of the, the eventually of the copyright. Eventually, no, eventually. So in your world, you want to see you want to see the whole value chain owned being by black. being black. Yeah, because we created the music. Okay, you know what I mean. White people can own classical music. Well, we, we got, let let we them got, own got, the, whatever got, that Mozart got, stuff got, that they we make. Got, um, let them Jay -Z own that. At, at, at. Well, he's a minority stakeholder, no. Is he's he? A, at Rock Nation, he's yeah. got less than 20 No, not Rock of, Nation. Tidal. No, he's a minority stakeholder. It's sold it to Jack Dorsey now. Okay. Did that deal go through? Of course. So that's mm. why I'm off Twitter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's why I got ejected off of Twitter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, you know, when I posted about, you know, Kanye's contract and I summarized it for people. Right. It, it went viral. Right. Jay Z and Jack Dorsey are sitting side by side in their pictures on Instagram and everything mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. At the same time, next thing, a couple of weeks later, my account gets permanently suspended. I'm like, who did I offend? Did I set up an mm -hmm. insurrection? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it was just you, you being, know I mean? being the authority. I'm, you know what I mean? I'm like, what? <laughs> Hold on. The only, uh. like, I was the first person to be permanently suspended from Twitter. Okay. In the world. So you, there's, no, there's no reclaiming your, your, your account again? Donald Trump is now suing for his account. But okay. they changed the terms of service uh -huh. for me. Okay. And then did that to block Trump. Mm. Okay. That's the level of influence I had mm. from South Africa alone. Yeah. From the fact no, that DJ that. Academics is posting about yes. it. Kanye West is, yes. is, is I, responding I, to my I, tweet, I, I telling us that, from, uh, that Jay Z, Jay -Z is only. Mm. Obviously, people from New York are talking about it. Yeah. Yeah, it, obviously. It, uh, it sent shockwaves everywhere. I was yeah. called by the head of YouTube mm -hmm. in New York. Mm. It's like, yo, why are you wilding on Twitter? Yo, <laughs> calm down. That's why I even apologized to that lady, you know, who was calling me out because I was called, uh -huh. you know, from New York. The, the, you know, uh, my OG and homie, Tuma. 
Pasa mm -hmm. calls me at like it's 1 a.m. there. He's mm -hmm. in Washington. Um, he's because he's moved um, mm -hmm. from New York now. He stays in, in mm -hmm. DC mm -hmm. and Maryland. So he calls me at that time like, yo, your tweet just went way, 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 way mm -hmm. too mm -hmm. viral. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> way, 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 way too viral. Uh -huh. And I didn't even think that would happen. You yeah. know what I mean? And now I've got millions of people coming at me. And like, mm -hmm. I've never mm -hmm. experienced something like that. And at the end of the day, I think for me, it was like me championing the cause of black owned black music. Mm -hmm. That's all it was. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that Kanye West's best album, his mm -hmm. best work, mm -hmm should be owned by Universal, mm -hmm. you know? But at least I believe that Kanye West can buy Universal, mm -hmm. you know? But to conscientize everybody else to say, hey, hold on, as black people, with this art that we're creating right now, we need to maintain ownership because mm -hmm. we own the music industry. Mm -hmm. The entire top 100 everywhere Every, yeah. is black the, artists. The billboard, yeah. Except for mm -hmm. the 500 billion a year mm -hmm. that uh, Korean government spends on K-pop. Mm -hmm. It's black artists. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we own music mm -hmm. and we should be the ones profiting um, mm -hmm. from it. You know, mm -hmm. we are the ones creating it. Mm -hmm. uh, the value chain is something that, you know, um, we can be able to accelerate our participation in that by involving ourselves in the tech space. Okay. And that's where you're seeing the most growth on the African continent. Okay. Anyway, there's a lot of people that are getting into the tech into space. Tech, yeah. I mean, yeah, like, I mean, like, look at a, a, an institution like HIT mm -hmm. in Harare. Mm -hmm. The stuff that is being churned out of there, mm. there's kids there being flown all around the world because they're like, you know, um, there's nothing else for us to build in it's Zimbabwe. App, yeah, it's app, it's app and, and, and gaming though. That's, but is it really stuff that, like practical stuff that we, we need here in Africa? NFTs are showing us that okay. yes, there is. Because mm. we are creators. Yeah. We create culture right. and the world adapts to our culture. You know what I mean? We are the power of culture. Or, they adapt, but more frequently they, they, they buy. Yeah, they consume our culture, mm -hmm. but that's because it's sold through their value chains. Yes. And they benefit mm -hmm. the most from our culture. Mm -hmm. And we need to change that. And the only way to change that is if we do differently from what was done in the established markets where mm -hmm. they try to monopolize everything. Mm -hmm. Everything is about monopolistic systems. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. We look at things like Look at Facebook being shut down. Mm -hmm. Do people really think there was an error? No, that was the Federal Trade Commission is trying to break Facebook apart. The government can shut down the internet in Uganda. Mm -hmm. What's stopping the US government from shutting oh, sure. down Facebook, mm -hmm. WhatsApp and everything else so that we can cause a crisis mm -hmm. that can show people the power of a monopoly mm -hmm. to do the harm? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. These are the types of things. And yes, we shut down Facebook for just six to ten hours and mm -hmm. everything else. And the entire world now recognizes that, listen, mm -hmm. if Facebook has all this ownership, mm -hmm. this monopoly is against us. Mm -hmm. They can censor us. They can control yeah. our political campaigns and everything else. We've mm -hmm. already had the Cambridge Analytica scandal, mm -hmm. you know, that influenced getting Trump into the office. Mm -hmm. And then we had Trump being silenced by social media, which mm -hmm. influenced getting Biden into office. Mm -hmm. So already seeing that actually these social media and tech companies actually run the world. Mm -hmm. They own the world. Mm -hmm. Our communication, everything, they own everything. Mm -hmm. And we cannot allow ourselves to be monopolized as an African continent. Mm -hmm. All 54 states, you know, mm -hmm. need to dedicate themselves to protecting mm -hmm. themselves from monopolies and democratizing the knowledge of how to participate in this new fourth industrial revolution. So you think the government was, was had a hand in, American government I, had a hand I, I, in I it. don't think, it's not about the government had a hand. Uh -huh. The government, Amazon Web Services, mm -hmm. right? Provides cloud-based services for all websites in the States, Netflix, mm -hmm. um, Amazon Prime, right, right. Um, all of that. That's all hosted on Amazon Web Services. Mm -hmm. What else is hosted on Amazon Web Services? NSA, mm -hmm. CIA, FBI. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just saying. All right. NSA, CIA, so, mm -hmm. FBI. Okay. What about the FTC, Federal Trade Commission? Mm -hmm. There's the new FTC chair that's in, been brought in mm -hmm. that's promised to break up these big tech monopolies. Mm -hmm. And this, we're just starting to see it. So China has said, we're going to take the bullet first. Mm -hmm. We've already seen it with Ant. We've mm. already seen it now with um, this ever, what's it, ever grand, ever, yeah, ever grand um, property, property company. Development, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. 
they're killing all these monopolies. Monopolies, okay. In China right now. Uh -huh. And they're taking the knock now. Mm -hmm. America is taking the knock a little bit later. Mm -hmm. China's going to recover before America does because they took the knock first. Mm -hmm. And China is going to recover before America does because they've got a centrally controlled economy. Mm -hmm. Whereas America, you know, it's a bipartisan... How does it help the common, the common, the common man? If Facebook... Uh, it's broken up. Broken up, breaks it from, from uh, uh, Instagram. And how it does allows that, you how does it to the also have an opportunity to be the next Mark Zuckerberg. But if Facebook is as big as it is, then mm. as soon as you've got a brilliant idea, they need to buy you. Buy you out Everything quickly. Everything is being bought. Bum, 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 bum. You know what I mean? That's it. Yeah. Or they replicate you mm -hmm. and use their capital to well, scale yeah, you before that's, you can. That's, um, that's competition control. They can do that, right? Um, but who does competition control? Because mm. does does the American government do competition control? Mm. Look at all the monopolies that exist there. Yeah. They broke up the Bell Corporation, mm -hmm. which gave us all these different phone companies, AT&T and everything else. It's mm. because Alexander Graham Bell obviously monopolized mm. through a patent the mm. telephone system, right? Right. They broke that up because it got too strong. Mm -hmm. So America goes through these waves. They allow a monopoly to develop and mm -hmm. profit from it and then pay taxes to the government and do whatever it is, employ a lot of people. And then when it gets to a certain um, critical mass, that's when they step in with the FTC mm -hmm. and break it up. So this is what's going to happen to mm -hmm. a lot of these tech companies. You so, know? So, so good for the common man. It's good for the common man. All right. It's good. It's okay, good. Okay. Monopolies are bad. Okay. Like That's it. Monopolies are bad. But as a businessman... The drive to get most profits means okay. that you need to monopolize the market. Okay. That's the only way. You know, you need to have okay. a unique product offering mm. that only you can give to the market, mm. and that's how you monopolize a market. Mm -hmm. So you're on you're, so you're on Mosaic magazine cover. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that was my first ever photo shoot like for a magazine. Yeah. And How did that come come about? Because we, we, no we know Someone you. Someone invited me. We know you, like you said, calling out people, getting shut down on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, 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 now, recently, punching people or punching back. I, 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 I didn't punch back. I didn't punch. Uh, uh, I, I ducked. Nearly, nearly to the ground. I ducked. I, 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 nearly, uh, you know, I ducked. I was, just, I was just too fast. But, um, yeah, no, I didn't punch. <laughs> obviously, I'm on a whole anti-violence campaign, so I can't be punching people. All right, okay. You know, uh, or encouraging that. You know, I ducked. You know, um, but I mean, like, it's like, damn. Well, you you kind of encouraged it by going live. And, and, when? On on your post, you encouraged. When? Is, is the, it? the whole uh, no, that was prior. <laughs> No. He, no, he called me. Uh -huh. Stoney called me a long time ago, last year. Okay. He said, yo, let's meet, whatever, whatever. He was angry. Mm -hmm. I said, yo, let's meet. Let's do it. I sent him my location. No, let's do it somewhere public. I'm mm -hmm. like, you're gonna, you are trying to publicly humiliate me. Mm -hmm. Don't you know I'm a much bigger brand than you mm -hmm. will ever be? Mm -hmm. You haven't even sold 10,000 records mm -hmm. in your life. Mm -hmm. Forget about being an artist and performing. I'm saying you haven't even sold 10,000 records that you own mm -hmm. that are your copyright. Mm -hmm. you're, you're not in the same conversation mm -hmm. as me mm -hmm. you know what i mean like that's one thing that mm -hmm. you know stogie must understand so when i'm coming at him he thinks mm -hmm. that i'm coming at him as a young no mm -hmm. he's a son to me mm -hmm. he's never achieved what i've achieved mm -hmm. you know what i mean and that's what he needs to respect mm -hmm. and he just made himself get disrespected i mean he he got his short turn up and all that type of stuff and, you know, he has to apologize to his church and kids and wife and all that type mm -hmm. of... I mean, like, an old man ending up taking an L in a fight. Imagine if your kids now have to see you with a torn-up shirt and now mom, wife has to stitch it up and mm -hmm. stuff like that. That's, like, it's very unbecoming. And mm -hmm. it, it's, it's sad that he would stoop so low, but, I mean, it, I guess it's out of desperation. Okay. Um, but for me... It's desperation or you, you revenge? F for what? I don't know, for you, uh, um, you know, he asked you to meet you. Yeah. So you can, you can sort it out, and you pretty much dissed him. No, no, no. I asked him to meet him. I waited there. I sent oh, him the location. The private I waited. space. You understand? Uh, no, uh, I, I waited at my house. I said, yo, I gave this guy a time. Uh -huh. We're going to meet 1 p.m. Here's the location. Mm -hmm. It's now 2 p.m. I've been waiting for an hour. Now I'm going live. Okay. This guy's nowhere to be found, guys. Uh, He's a loser. Okay. You know? I didn't even insult him. All right, let's go back to let's go back to to Mosier. Yeah, Mosier. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so tell me about that experience. Uh, uh, let me see. Tell me about that experience because like, because I, I got I got photos here. 
um, from your from your shoot. Yeah, it I looks it looks freak, it's looking it's looking freaking I fantastic. I look a bit inadequate, but you know, <laughs> you know, no, because you guys look are this, Azana. Though. Look how fantastic this look. Okay, okay, okay. Now oh, this is the first time I'm seeing the figures. Uh, yeah, but like, okay. So obviously, I can't. I don't have a perception of myself. Uh -huh. Right, and I don't know the photographer. This could be you. No, this, this could be amazing. the new you. I yeah. like this. You. I like this. I, I like, like this new. I like you. this. No, I think this is uh -huh. a perfect rebranding. Uh -huh. So probably the timing of this is also perfect. But I mean, you guys uh -huh. had Azana there. Yeah. She's a singer. Uh -huh. but I never knew that she's actually model body. Yes. Like a model, like yeah. supermodel. Like I was like. No, but like, you know, because I've seen her from her artworks, you mm -hmm, know, I haven't mm -hmm. really seen her like live and direct. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how am I having a shoot with someone who looks like is mm -hmm. what is shot when mm -hmm. you're having it? So I, yeah, so I'd never done a shoot before. So I, I did feel like that. But now that I've seen this picture, like I'm looking forward to seeing that shoot. Mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward to people seeing like mm -hmm. myself presented in, a in that way. Yeah, in, in, yeah in, no, it, it, it'll be it'll be it'll be a shock. Uh huh. Because I've, through my anonymity, anonymity, mm -hmm. been able to not really take care of how I appear or my look, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, so now that, you know, the authority is a public persona, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, uh, do I really want to just look scruffy the whole entire time? Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Um, so what, what, what direction would this lead you to? I mean, let's say, let's say it drops, it drops this Friday, this mm -hmm. Thursday, mm -hmm. and everybody goes crazy. This is the new uh, <laughs> authority. Yeah. Do we change? Uh, do we go from authority to something else? Look, um, do you know Philippe? Philippe, yes, He's been of begging course. me to be a model for 10 years. Yes, Philippe, yes, 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 yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay. He's been begging me to be a model for okay. 10 years. He's okay. like, you look like uh, my cute little twin brother. Uh -huh. You should be a model. Uh -huh. so, so this is not the last cover we're going to see you on. Um, of course not. It can't be. But this is the first. This is this is this is the very you know I mean? first. It's the, it's the, and it has to happen to be on a mosaic. That's it. Cover. That's yeah. it. That's it. That's it. Uh -huh. You know. And probably it's if great it was mosaic, I wouldn't have done it because mm -hmm. mosaic. I mean, obviously, I've been watching the covers that you guys do, mm -hmm. and um, the people that you guys get. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? All of the people are like you know, left field mm -hmm. in the field that they're in, although mm -hmm. they're mainstream. Right. But yeah, they're, yeah. You know, they're the oddballs, but who are doing like things differently, breaking yeah, molds. Yeah, breaking molds. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I was like, hey, okay. Moving the culture. So if you're calling me, I'm like, hey. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh -huh. I'm a fan of everyone you put on the cover. So uh -huh. I was like, you know? And yeah, also like, it's a black thing. Uh -huh. Again. Okay. You know? Like, of course. So it felt good being surrounded by. Everyone on this on, on this set. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. Like if I saw a white person, I know there's a a black person who paid them. That that just felt good. Yeah. Yeah. So this nota is it's, it's EFF to the core. No. <laughs> black uh, power to the core. Yeah. Okay. I'm 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 apolitical. Yeah. Un un unapologetic. I'm, black I'm, to the core. Yeah. I'm yeah like. Mm -hmm. So you know. It's like um, from a musical side of things, right? Um, you know, my greatest regret from when we did um, the whole, from when uh, we did, we released the car to Ngood, created that sound and everything else, and then we converted it to spirit. Mm -hmm. And... From spirit onwards, we never really went back to have like a black consciousness message mm. in the music, mm -hmm. per se, mm -hmm. you know, which I feel like, you know, right now when I look back, I'm thinking to myself, oh, damn it, we encouraged a whole lot of alcohol abuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Isn't now I need to work my way into figuring out mm -hmm how I could reverse my contribution to that damage, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, and profiting from that, mm -hmm. you know, like th that's it. Yeah. So we need to be able to profit from spreading alcohol abuse awareness. Mm -hmm. Otherwise we'll just profit from alcohol, alcohol abuse. Alcohol abuse awareness. I'm, that's, I'm, that's kind of a trickier thing to put into music, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It is. It, it's very difficult, but yeah, yeah. we were in a position of privilege where we were already on the top of the charts. Mm -hmm. If anyone could have done it, it could have been us. Okay. We didn't. All right. How would you put that into 
How would you put that in that message into to, to music? I think if you if you if you put into the music about having pride of self, mm -hmm. um, have, having love for self, I think that should, should translate to, to, to Kiddick's uh, father of Zen. Mm -hmm. He said he's not drinking or smoking weed until he's got a ten million rands in his bank account. Okay. I think that I thought that was a smart way to put it in. Rands. <laughs> but to, to get banked nowadays, sometimes you get sponsored by alcohol. I understand. Yeah, but so, so don't is he, consume it. Ah, so you can, be, Lira. you can be the face of. Lira did it with Gin Johnny Tonic. Walker. Uh -huh. She did it with Johnny Walker. And in the ad, it says Lira does not drink alcohol. In the ad? In the ad. Okay. But she's Lira. Uh -huh. She was at the top and they uh -huh. needed that brand right, right. to endorse this entire mm -hmm. Johnny Walker campaign that they were doing. Mm -hmm. And she used the privileged position she was in mm -hmm. to ensure that she takes her stance and mm -hmm. says, listen, I don't drink this. Mm -hmm. And it should only be consumed responsibly. Right, right. Right? Mm -hmm. But they are sponsoring mm -hmm. or supporting things that mm -hmm. are close to my heart. Okay. And therefore, I'm glad, I'm I'll glad gladly that, okay. endorse them. Okay. So you also the authority on, on social stuff. No, culture. That's just... Nah, you sound like, like social commentary just now, though. It is social commentary, yeah. but it's part of our culture. Uh -huh. It's about the culture that we're trying to create. Okay. We're trying to create a more positive culture. That's how human progression works. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? First, we started as savages, hunter gatherers, mm -hmm. banging women over their head to take them as wives and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And then we start having a legal that's, that's system. That's not a true story, though. No, no, no. It, it, it happens in, in South Africa. Uktuala, it happens. Is it? Yeah. Banging, hitting, hitting the head. And well, you, I mean, you... I, I, well, I'm just. <laughs> I'm just like I think that's, it your, more graphic. I think that's yeah, your white, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's your white yeah, yeah. education there. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> no the, the Neanderthals did it, and uh -huh. that's Europeans. Uh -huh. So I'm just saying, even okay. Europeans were savages, you mm -hmm. know, before they created a legal system. Mm -hmm. And then the legal system was basically to take out all the bad apples from society so they don't procreate. So mm -hmm. we take the rapists out, we take the murderers out, mm -hmm. and then we create a less and less and less and less and less violent society over time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Through like genetic selection. Mm -hmm. You know, the violent ones, the ones who've got the most violent genes mm -hmm. are kept out of society so they can't reproduce. Mm -hmm. But if you've got a country where um, the Criminal Procedures Act and the justice system just don't mm -hmm. deal with violent people, right. then what happens is that you'll have the violent people reproducing, reproducing, and then mm -hmm. it's a DNA problem, you mm -hmm. know? Um, but they where, have found but, but, but scientific where, so, evidence. So it's actually where we are now. We're, that's where South Africa is now. Where I, I think the whole world, not just South Africa. Well, the rest of the world has rooted out, it out more because they've got high conviction rates. Okay. So if we judge it on conviction rates in terms of like the safety of our mm -hmm. societies, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like South Africa's down there with mm -hmm. Mexico and mm -hmm. a whole lot of other countries, Colombia, mm -hmm. and you know, we're part of the murder capitals of the world. Mm -hmm. And um, if you look at societies where there's much more like mm -hmm. Finland, Norway, mm -hmm. and everything else. There's less violent people. There'll be like one odd violent person. But who it's, will, it's like, not. It's not. Murder is fifty it, people. Is it because the, the the murderer there got murdered by the state? Is that what? Is that? Yeah. That's what you feel. It's genetic because it? they've tested the brains uh -huh. of killers and everything else, and they found actually evidence that certain things in their brains allow them to be more violent with less of a conscious. But isn't it? It's training too, though, because you can train. You can train a soldier. So have less you, of a conscious of When feel. you take weed or you take a drug mm -hmm. as a child soldier, mm -hmm. it changes your brain. Mm -hmm. It changes the... Yeah, so yeah. these are the things. Mm -hmm. So you also pass those things down genetically. So if you said, if, if, if someone is a, a, a war hero because he, he managed to kill 74 I mean, uh, uh, enemy soldiers and he comes home and now he's killing is not a thing for him. What, yeah, do, what, what do you do? What do you do? Do you do you then kill him? You remove him out of the society? Well, politically, you can't. Yeah, that's the thing. So he's gonna procreate. So that's the, the that those are the inefficiencies of our system, uh -huh. and that's why we need to develop mm -hmm. better systems. Mm -hmm. And we're developing. Mm -hmm. We're going to come to that. Mm -hmm. People are going to become aware of that. Mm -hmm. That war criminals or people who've gone to war, like mm -hmm. the war veterans and everything else, that. They can't be productive members of society. How many mm. war veterans in America are involved in mass murders? Shootings? Yes. The, you know what I mean? In crime. All that GBV, stuff. All, all that. All, all that. All all that all because, that, yeah. Because of the so war we go, we, you go, you go, you go, you go but, and make them? But now we've taken mm -hmm. soldiers out of um, Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And then drones are sent in and then they kill innocent people or whatever. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. now we've taken the people, the human element out mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So now we're using machines to right, do right. the mm -hmm. violence. Mm -hmm. Right? And the more we remove people from the face of the violence, mm -hmm. the less and less 
prone to violence people will be. But and but but the people who are the victims sometimes actually become. That's it. It's because it, it, if, if 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 my country and my family is get, getting bombed. I want revenge. By drones, yeah. Mm -hmm. I want revenge. And also, I see you killing my people. It becomes... You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't matter or yeah. what the justification for killing my people is. Yeah. You kill my people. You know, the Palestinians mm -hmm. and all, mm -hmm. all that type of stuff. Yeah. So the less and less wars mm -hmm. we have in the world, the mm -hmm. less and less violent our society will be in general. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing, is that the anti-war sentiment, mm -hmm. right, needs to be something that we, we raise children on. Mm -hmm. So that we raise a generation that is not going to vote for people who are going to spend money mm. on military might. Mm. They're going to spend money on social development, rather. But the, 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 the pro-war countries are the richest. The pro-war countries are the richest. Yes. But they've also got the, the, the people who've got money mm. to lobby against mm -hmm. war stuff. I mean, like, there's a huge but lobby that, against but them. That, but that's contradictory. If pro-war makes you money, and you're getting rich from I understand, it. Why would you pro -war also is be anti-war? not anti -war? the only money. Pro-war is not the only money. It's the making. biggest money. Yes, it's, it's the, the biggest, biggest bank. Yes, obviously, because the, the, the biggest bank. industrial complex yeah. is like, yeah, I understand that. Yeah. But what it does is that, uh, what, did you think? what did you call Rising tide raises all boats. Mm -hmm. So as much as the pro-war people, mm -hmm. they're also raising the boats of the anti-war people. Mm -hmm. And there's going to come a, a critical point in mm -hmm. time where just socially, just mm. the way in which we are raised and mm. the way in which we are taught about war and mm. its destructive nature, mm. that the generation that's coming after us mm. are going to be completely against this. And already we are seeing the generation that's coming now are completely against the whole lot of the social norms. They that are that. really f f strange. No, the new, you're they, old. They, <laughs> 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 they're not they, strange. They are, no, you see, they, 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 okay, they, they, they're yeah. strange. Actually, you're right. They, no, they are strange. No, they're yeah. strange. They're not... They're not crazy, yeah, but they're strange. There's, to there's, us, a, there's a difference between so crazy. There's, there's a difference between crazy and strange. And strange. Yeah. They're strange because you now you have to get used to them. Mm. It's not and also they're in the majority. Yes, and so the growing majority. crazy would be like they just out of the head. You don't have to get used to them. Just no, shut no, them. No. Up. We they're are strange the because they come with stuff that's actually waking you up. Well, no, they're making us crazy. <laughs> Seriously, because there's more of them, yeah. and then there's less of us. They're making us look crazy, not making us crazy. Well, I mean, if they say we are crazy, uh, and they're the majority, uh, who wins that democratically? Uh, yeah, but I'm loving that. I'm loving the new movement. The new kids. The new kids. Mm -hmm. I'm loving them. They're, they're, yeah, they're, they're energy, freedom, they're, they're bravery. I mean? they're, yes, I'm loving that. They're going to make a change. They are. I just hope they don't, because they're not the first generation that came with change. Yes. The 60s generation came with change. And got co-opted? Yes. Got the 80s generation came with change. Got co-opted? This is, I fear, I'm fearing that they also will get corrupted. I don't this, think we're this, gonna, I don't think we're gonna be able to co-opt these ones. Because, because they're you're able de your democratization of everything. The knowledge, the Tank democratization of the uh -huh. knowledge and everything uh -huh. else. The, the way in which, I mean, kids are teaching their uh -huh. parents. Look at what happened to Trump's rally mm -hmm. and those 13-year-olds on TikTok mm -hmm. that basically... Squashed, made... yeah, squashed the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> and no adult was involved in that. <laughs> no adult orchestrated that. It uh -huh. was just a bunch of... And none of us knew because mm. that's what they do in secret. Mm -hmm. We don't approve of what's happening on TikTok. Mm -hmm. You know, octogenarians are now climbing onto TikTok, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that they can appeal to their own mm -hmm. demographic, mm -hmm. but they don't know what the kids are up to mm -hmm. or understand it culturally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they've got their own entire lexicon mm -hmm. that we will never ever relate to because mm -hmm. we didn't create it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I don't think we've got a desire to try and co-opt them because we don't understand what it is that they're mm -hmm. actually doing, and we don't know how to invest in it or mm -hmm. we don't know how to profit from it. Well, what's the information they're getting? Where are they, they're getting it from Google and YouTube, and they're, that can and that can be programmed by algorithms yeah. and everything else yeah. so yes obviously the proliferation of mm -hmm. fake news yeah, is also a problem, yeah. but that's why the crushing of the tech monopolies mm -hmm. is going to benefit them and mm -hmm. democratize the knowledge even further but i don't want you know 50 apps for sharing you don't post. want but you're gonna die soon <laughs> <laughs> you, do you want 50 apps <laughs> the kids I, I mean, they, they all know how to manage 50 how apps many TikToks? Saying, look how many tiktoks can make, they have all they I'm have tiktok that, they have reels so they have can I tell you something? they're doing the same thing the kids laughed at me for typing on my phone uh, did you type on your 
right. You can just talk to it. It types for itself. Yeah. I was like, okay. and then I started talking to my phone, and yeah. and it's so efficient. Uh-huh. They laughed at me. Well, Zucker- Zuckerberg is recording all that. You know. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah, yeah. True. And you he's know, gonna, he's recording all the ideas. And he's gonna manip- You're gonna use it to manipulate. Yeah, but I mean, Zuckerberg mm. has got two years left before he gets crushed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean that's for sure. I mean this, the 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 crash. The I'll get I'll get put in a price, corner. I'll get put in a corner price. that he has to diverge all your little secrets. Um, he, Amazon Web Service has all our secrets, mm-hmm. and that's the FBI's web service. Got all the nudes. Everything. The nudes too. Everything. Shit. Amazon Web Services. <laughs> I told you NSA. See? <laughs> <laughs> <I mean, laughs> You know what I mean? It is that they need to find a justification for how they acquired that. <laughs> That's the problem. Uh, you know, how do they justify, oh, we, uh, okay, mm-hmm. you know, they'd have to give the whole entire thing up. Mm-hmm. But there's no reason for me to believe that Amazon Web Services would be providing, like, the cloud-based services for the FBI, CSI, mm-hmm. I mean, the CIA and the NSA, all mm-hmm. the security agencies in the mm-hmm. United States, mm-hmm. and then not be giving the United States government that information. Mm-hmm. So that probably, you know, there's always a paper trail and mm-hmm. people can apply for privacy. But Edward Snowden told us that there's none of it. There's none of it. No, and there's, uh, there's, there's, what's his name is for Amazon's getting richer and richer and richer because you know, he's complying. If there was privacy, he's Edward with the Snowden government. would be able to go back home. Yes. He's still stuck in Russia. Yeah. You know? So, okay. that's right. the thing. But look at this. This Facebook scandal, mm-hmm. it's a whistleblower. Mm-hmm. Again, this generation is whistleblowing mm-hmm. and... They're just standing up for like what's really morally right. Yeah. What's ethically right. Yeah. That's what, that's they are, that's what they're standing, that's up, standing and up for. Can I tell you something? What? Our generation, mm-hmm. we have had to fight mm-hmm. moralistic fights mm-hmm. that have put us in a corner where even our own morality is questionable. Mm-hmm. So when we're judging others, like for example, President Zuma, mm. it gets a little bit difficult to judge him because you're like, hey, I'm not perfect. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. If you're of that generation. Right. The younger generation is like, oh no, burn Zuma and everything mm-hmm. else. But the older generation is like, hey man, the struggle that we come from, you kids mm-hmm. don't understand it. Mm-hmm. You don't understand the things that we had to go through. You don't understand mm-hmm. the things that we had to do to get you this freedom here. Right. And right. because we got you, you guys don't understand the value of this freedom because you've mm-hmm. never been denied it. Mm. You understand? So these crimes that you guys are calling out uh-huh. pale in comparison by the old generation's perception of it. Of what, of what, what bad it was. Uh, so, so, 10 years from now, mm-hmm. what do you look, what, what's the South African landscape looks like giving into account these, the new generation? Mm. These, these new uh, young the new people, them, yeah. So, 10 years from now, in terms of South Africa, I think South Africa is going to be, you know, the breadbasket of Africa. Okay. The bread basket Africa. Yeah, because our bread is going to be digital. Okay. All right. You know? Like that's what it's that that's what it's you know, mm-hmm. that's what it's looking like. These mm-hmm. kids are going to develop and scale their companies because mm-hmm. companies that are in the tech space scale mm-hmm. at a rate of knots. Well Kenya is doing very well. Kenya is doing, very, is doing well. very well. Ghana is doing space, very well. Yeah. And guess what that means? Mm-hmm. Competition. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And competition. Mm-hmm. innovation mm-hmm. you know everyone's going to be driving harder mm-hmm. and harder and harder and mm-hmm. harder and these systems that we you know we are basically uh, decentralizing mm-hmm. as well are going to have less and less influence mm-hmm. on that future mm-hmm. you know because that future is going to be uh, a race to carbon neutrality mm-hmm. And all the previous oil giants, coal giants, mm-hmm. mining giants, and everything else mm-hmm. are going to have to change whatever their business models are, mm-hmm. you know, to be greener mm-hmm. and everything else. Because every baby being born is a tree hugger now, mm-hmm. you know. But in the political space, what will it look like in 10 years with the, with the new generation? So, political, we're going to talk political, economical, political. and then culture and music to wrap up. For me, I think politically, right, because of the democratization Mm -hmm. of knowledge and the the digitalization of our economies, Mm -hmm. right, Mm -hmm. we've taken away male privilege Mm -hmm. because there's less and less jobs where you actually need a man Mm -hmm. or manpower for. Okay. You know what I mean? So jobs can be done by men and women. Right. 
problem with men is that men are less communicative. Okay. And that lack of exchange of ideas in comparison to women mm -hmm. who are more united because of how they've been marginalized mm -hmm. means that we're going to see more women mm -hmm. actually taking leadership roles, especially from the new younger generation. And you can already see that anytime you see a new young person that's like a bright spark or whatever, it's always a woman. Mm -hmm. So like a Patel, there's, there's mm -hmm. no young boys that we've seen that are like mm -hmm. geniuses or anything else. It's because they don't have the social skills that women have. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going to matter more and more in the world that we're developing. Because obviously, um, we have to develop a new kind of social skill with an intersection of our digital connectivity, mm -hmm. you know, which for us, we're hybrids. We know how it was to not be digitally connected mm -hmm. and then to grow into digital connection mm -hmm. and then to be addicted to it. And yeah. then you have Facebook taken away mm -hmm. for six hours and you feel like you're breathing organ. Yeah. <laughs> you no, know, I, I took it as, as a moment to rest and reset. Like, yeah. 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 Okay. Like that was like, and I, then, I, I wish like everything was off. So there's a so you so you let's say you you have a 15 year old son right now. Mm -hmm. He wants to do music. Mm -hmm. He wants to Number be a professional coach. Age, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's possible though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have a friend who's already a, a grandma. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Um, hey, and you know we live in so, a country where teenage pregnancy is also rampant. So yeah. What what would be your advice? He said I want to, I want to do music. I want to get into music. What would you advise? What type of music? What genre? I wouldn't tell what, him what, what type part of music. Of the music I wouldn't tell industry would you put when you say it would you advise? I, like I would say work on finding who you are. Mm -hmm. The artist that you are? No, no. Or just who you are. Being. The human being that you are. So okay. that when you come onto the mic, mm -hmm. you come self aware. Mm -hmm. That's it. So all right. Focus on finding who, who you, you are, are, finding your identity. Who mm -hmm. am I? The, my spirits, my essence, and everything else. Mm -hmm. So when you come onto the mic, you're honest. You're not trying to be yeah, anybody you're, else. Yeah. You're not. You're, amplify, you're amplifying you. Exactly. Okay. That's that, that's that's okay. more, that that's the only advice that I have because at the end of the day, I can't determine what are the tastes mm -hmm. of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Like who am I? I'm just one person. You know what I mean? They mm -hmm. will decide what the taste of tomorrow is. Mm -hmm. But if they are true to themselves, at the end of the day, they'll always be authentic and mm -hmm. people can resonate with that. Okay. Yeah. But authentic doesn't fit any sort of norm. It's whatever that no, is. No, it's what you are. It's yeah. individualistic. Yeah. That's the thing about authenticity. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well. I mean, even Bandila and Banela are not the same person. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, Bandila is my friend. Mm -hmm. Banela is... His brother, right? <laughs> you know what I mean. Mm. They're twins. <laughs> so, yeah, you talking about you talking about the major, major league, league, yeah, major league guys. Yeah. Is my, like yeah. we grew yeah. up in the same mm -hmm. area. Like we used to mm -hmm. be friends. We've been friends since we were teenagers, mm -hmm. like high school age. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. We grew up together. I think they're a year younger than me. Yeah, yeah. they're, they're ninety one. I'm ninety. Mm -hmm. So, you know, mm -hmm. um, just that understanding that I can have a friend who's got a twin brother, but. I'm friends with him. <laughs> <laughs> so that, okay. It's not like I'm friends with his brother because they're twins. Right, you know what right, I mean? They're right. two different people. He's yeah, got yeah, his yeah, own yeah, friends. He's got yeah, his own yeah, life. Yeah, you know? yeah. Not to say that I've, I've got any beef with Banele. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. But like, Banele okay. is my friend. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? All right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out for, for Mosaic, Mosaic Magazine, uh, Piece you. 31 or 32. Thank you. Um, Do so I have anything? Any statements? Well, I thought you just did one, a really no, great one, I, but we, you can, yeah, you can give your, 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 is, your final departing my statement. My final departing statement is <laughs> all <right. laughs> to all the legends, mm -hmm. female artists, like mm -hmm. I said, like, you know, women are going to run the world because it's less of mm -hmm. manpower. Let's start grooming. Mm -hmm. Let's start grooming young women mm -hmm. because us as men, we've groomed other men. Right. We've opened doors for other, other young, young men. Yeah. You're right. Constantly do it. I mean, right now, currently... Uh, you must. Keenan is doing that for yeah for Costa. Costa and his whole entire squad. What's the example for female on no, the female artist? None. There's none right now. None. Why would you say that? Why would you, why, none. Why, why would you well, say that? I, I, why? Like, it, it, why is that okay, none? If I say if I say none, it's it's not hundred percent honest. Mm -hmm. But if I say who I've seen doing it, people will call it biased. Mm. My wife has started an organization mm -hmm. called The Womb. Okay. Women of Music Business. Okay. And that's basically about grooming people. She's already taken mm. um, 70 women on the African continent mm. through, you know, uh, uh, Vitz Business School, mm -hmm. um, social, 
well, social entrepreneurship course, mm-hmm. you know, about getting funding, mm-hmm. etc. That is something I've seen. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen any other example okay. of any other women that are helping effectively to bring well, new. But what's the reason talent. there? Because I think the more unified we are, um, the more collaborative we are, the more powerful we are, right? Yeah, but so why is that not happening? Because it's a man's industry, and so women feel mm-hmm. like, you know, they need to hold on to their spot. They cannot give it to anybody else. If I'm Pearl Tusi. That's it. Uh huh. You know what I mean? I cannot embrace Natasha Tahane or whoever's the new girl or, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Unless it's like using them to gal pal. Okay. You know, uh-huh. where I am the queen bee. Mm-hmm. You know, there always needs to be a Beyonce in the crew. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Instead of actually just saying, hey, um, let's actually groom these women. I mean, yeah. look at how long it took Beyonce to actually decide to groom women. Chloe and Ellie are coming now because Beyonce is 40. Right, right. And you know what I mean? And obviously Beyonce for the past 10 years has not been as sexy as Rihanna. Mm-hmm. So it's not, so it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the perception that the, there are not enough seats for at women. the table. So you're going to hold on to your, your, your seat as, mm-hmm. for as long as you can. Because you're not going to bring on the new young woman mm-hmm. because a young woman is competition for mm-hmm. an older woman. I mean, uh-huh. we've trained that. As men, we've trained women to believe that okay. you know their value is um, uh, is 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 their value is anal- analogous to mm-hmm. their youth. Uh, so open the, open the door. That's it. Women should open. Experienced legend should open the door. That's it. For the younger ones. For the younger ones that, for are, the younger ones that are coming up and not feel threatened. Okay. You know what I mean? But right. that will happen more and more mm-hmm. as soon as more and more women mm-hmm. elevate themselves in an mm-hmm. executive level in terms of the control mm-hmm. of the industry. Uh-huh. And that's why, like, you know, I'm really encouraged by seeing, like, um, uh, Berita starting mm-hmm. an organization like The Womb. Mm-hmm. And also, I mean, just like, just her business acumen mm-hmm. and stuff like that is because her doors were opened, mm. but they were opened by a man mm. who's sitting across from me. Mm. You understand? Mm-hmm. It was you who trained her. On t- this is actually how the business runs. This is how management is supposed to be run and everything else. Mm. It wasn't a woman uh, who did that. Well, I mean, I can give a shout out to Ninel as well. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, her intention mm-hmm. in coming to fifth season mm-hmm. was not about Ninel. Uh-huh. It was about the figurehead of the organization, which is you. Mm, okay. And that's it. You mm. know what I mean? And um, yes, we give credit to Ninel, but I mean, look at you. Even you, just by partnering with Ninel, mm-hmm. you know, and the way in which she runs um, your guys' organization, you know. Is she your boss? Yes, she Okay, is. yeah. So yeah. the way in which she runs your guys' organizations, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And the fact that you know your role mm-hmm. within the organization mm-hmm. And you know how to respect her role mm-hmm. in the organization mm-hmm. also informs an, a talent like a Berita when she's observing to say, hey, me as a woman, I can also take this leadership role. Mm-hmm. I can take the responsibility. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. that's okay. it. So that's a, that's the final departing. That's my final departing shot is that that's okay. what I want to Let's see Let's give more. you two seconds of, of a monologue because I think I interrupted your... Your no, yeah, yeah. just the <laughs> final departing shot. Let's see mm-hmm. more women in the industry mm-hmm. grooming young women. Mm-hmm. You know, as soon as you secure your spot mm-hmm. onto the charts, look for young women who you feel you can give a start. Mm. All right. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. All right. We'll see you on the cover. Yeah. I can't, wait. I can't wait. <laughs> right. The new Noto will be coming very soon. Thank you for joining us. Uh, yeah, the new model. Yes. Mosaic pieces. Thank you.